Mm-hmm. Getting a little pepper ready. I want to make sure I have my diced peppers for my next meal I'm about to prepare. Dicing these up real quick. And I like to use the whole pepper. I don't want to waste nothing. I need my whole pepper. Get the full value. So I use the tops, the bottoms. Now I'm going to cut. Right, I'm using the whole pepper. Lining this up. Come on, you. Lining this up. Look at that. Nicely diced. Equally diced. Whoops. This little rascal jumped off the... Here we have it, huh? How's everybody doing out there? All right, my name's Steve Foreman from Time and Honey, and I'm ready to show you how to make a great and simple meal, which is called meatloaf. Something that's very practical. Every household loves meatloaf. A nice, simple, but easy to make and flavorful meatloaf. So what I always talk about in all of the cooking uh, demonstrations I do, we wanna make sure we are completely ready to make our recipe, right? We call that mise en place. What does that mean? It's a French word that means things in place, meaning I'm making sure I have all of my ingredients that are in the recipe ready to go. I make sure I have the tools that I'm gonna use, like my cutting board, my knives, my bowl I'm gonna mix my uh, uh, meatloaf in. I make sure I have my saute pan. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with this in a minute. I'm having all of my items ready to go, including this little topping sauce I'm gonna make for my meatloaf, which is through these two little items right here, but we'll talk about that later. We'll hide those right, right now. So, our mise en place, we're ready to go. We have our ground beef, we have peppers, we have onion, we have garlic, we have salt and pepper, a little onion powder, a little olive oil, right? So, a simple, oh, and I also have some oats, and I have a whole egg. Those are your simple ingredients to make it a really nice meatloaf. Now, meatloaf basically consists of a ground meat, such as ground beef, ground chicken, ground turkey. Those are your typical uh, meats that we would use when it comes to making a uh, meatloaf. We're gonna use ground beef today, but again, we wanna make sure that if there's something that you want a little leaner, less fat, we can always use our ground turkey, or we can use our ground chicken because ground beef has a little bit more fat in it and we're using what we call an 80-20 ratio. That's 80% of your meat, 20% of your fat to give it that flavor because that's what fat is all about is flavor. And we need a little bit in our diet. So it doesn't mean we remove all the fat, but we make sure that we minimize how much we're consuming day to day. So we're using an 80-20. Now, what I have here, you saw me dicing my peppers because those are one of the flavor elements I'm going to put into my meatloaf. Also, I'm always going to demonstrate dicing an onion because I feel like that's something that everybody in the household should learn how to do is to properly dice an onion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the top and the bottom off, then I'm going to peel it, right? I want to make sure I'm peeling it properly. Get all the peels off. Now, I can use these, I can freeze these and save them for later on if I wanna make a stock, but for right now, we're gonna discard them. Next, I take my onion, I have my chef knife, I cut it in half, right? Bam, just like that. Then I take the half of an onion, I take the tip of the knife, and I cut vertically down. But I'm not going all the way through the onion, so I go down, I go a quarter of an inch over, quarter of an inch over, quarter of an inch over. But notice the tip of the knife is not going all the way through. You wanna hold on a little bit of that onion. After that, 
Then I give it a quarter of a turn. Make sure you notice that quarter of a turn, right? Because you wanna now take your knife and go horizontally. And we're going to slide our knife across. Again, quarter of an inch, going down a quarter of an inch, not going all the way through, quarter of an inch down, not going all the way through. Now I take my knife vertically. Now we're cutting down. Look at that. Perfectly diced onions, right? And notice the blade of the knife, and I got my knuckles and my fingertips away, so the knife is going up against the knuckles. That way it prevents from me cutting myself. And then this last piece, I'm just going to cut it like that, and then go across. And now I have nicely diced onions. So those are what I'm gonna to use to give flavor to my meatloaf. I also have some minced garlic here, which is very important, and that's gonna be my aromatics. That's what we call aromatics. Those are the flavors, earthly flavors, but a lot of nice flavors that we're gonna incorporate into our meatloaf. Now, I'm gonna tell you, sometimes people just take the raw pepper and onion and garlic and throw it right into their ground meat, ground beef, mix it all up and put it into their pan to make their meatloaf. Me, I'm going to saute them. And why am I going to saute them? I'm going to tell you why. Because what I'm going to do is what we call caramelization. Caramelization basically cooks and what happens is the natural sugars that are in my peppers and my onions are going to sweat out as I'm sauteing them in my pan. So as I'm sauteing them in a hot pan, I'm going to saute the peppers and the onions. And what's going to happen is the natural sugars that are in the peppers and the onions are going to sweat out. They're going to fall to the bottom of the pan, and then I'm going to keep caramelizing. I'm going to keep cooking, and it's going to bring out flavor, and it's going to make it a sweeter, a little bit natural, sweeter flavor of the peppers and onions. Then I'm going to fold it into my um, uh, beef to make the ground, to make the meatloaf, and it's going to add a nice, flavorful profile of my meatloaf. So it's going to be a little bit sweeter, a little bit earthier. So we've got to make sure the pan is hot. So why don't you come on over here? And we're going to go ahead and saute real close and up front and personal. Making sure my pan is hot, right? High heat saute pan. This is a stainless steel pan, so it heats up relatively fast. And then I'm going to add a little oil. And I'm going to make sure my oil is hot before I add anything. Very important that your oil is hot. Because when you saute, that's a quick, that is a quick saute. That is a quick uh, cooking method. So here we are, we got it nice and hot, and you're looking for a smoke point. So we're gonna wait a little bit. So I have my peppers and onions ready to go. Even though I cut some, I already had some pre-cut. I'm gonna go ahead and add that in a minute. Now, smoke point is the oil is getting hot and it begins to smoke, and that's called smoke point. Almost there, and this is the sound. This is music to the chef's ear. You ready to hear this? You ready? Oh, this is gonna sound so good. That's what you wanna hear. Look at that, huh? So my onions, my peppers. You see that? And you wanna hear that sound, that's sauteing. So that is the ingredients hitting the hot oil and it's cooking it quickly. And that sound, I love that sound. I know something good is happening in this pan when it's making that noise. Look at that. So we're letting that cook. Now I'm gonna add my garlic. Tablespoon of garlic. The reason why I did the garlic third, I put onions, peppers, then garlic. The reason why I did the garlic third is because the garlic is much finer. I minced it, right? And I wanted to make sure that the onions and peppers had a head start in cooking and breaking down because I don't want the garlic to burn before the peppers and onions get done, right? Oh, the smell. That smells amazing. And that's the one great thing about cooking, right? You can have things cooking in your oven and on top of your stove. People are walking in the house and they're just instantly awakened with the senses and their smells of your oven cooking these foods and you just making these great meals and people walk through like 
My goodness, that smells amazing. That's what you want. Now you got them anticipated, right? Like they're thinking, this, this is gonna be a great meal. All right, now, if you look inside my pan, you can start seeing the browning occurring around the onions and the peppers. That's the natural sugars sweating out and cooking. And that's what we want. Oh yeah, that looks amazing. So in about one minute, that's gonna be done. So now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take my ground beef, my ground beef, right? And I'm gonna put it in my bowl. My peppers are almost there. Matter of fact, they're good. I'm gonna turn this off. Now I have this off. And I'm gonna let it sit there because I'm gonna let it continue to cook in this hot pan, but it's not gonna burn because I got the flame off. So now the natural heat of the pan is gonna continue the process of cooking everything, but it's not gonna burn. That way it gives me time now to come out over here and add the other ingredients I need to add to making my meatloaf. So one of the things you need is an egg. An egg has a natural binding ingredient in it called lecithin. Lecithin is in my egg yolk. Lecithin is like a stabilizer. It, it helps bind everything up. So that way the, the meatloaf, you see that? You like how I did that with one hand? You like how I cracked that open with one hand? Isn't that amazing? Hmm? So I have my egg. Now you want your pepper. You want some salt. Yeah, that's looking real good. Also, I add a little bit of onion powder. I just love onion powder. It gives it a little bit more flavor to it. I'm gonna add a little onion powder. Oh yeah. And now, check this out, right? This is instant oatmeal. This is Quaker instant oatmeal. Maple and brown sugar going into my meatloaf. One little packet like this, right? Amazing. What does it do? Well, it's like it helps bind everything together. It also acts like a filler because as, the, as it cooks, the oatmeal will absorb the grease coming from the fat of the beef and it'll absorb it and it'll swell up a little bit. So it acts like a filler, but also it's gonna enhance the flavor because I have maple syrup and brown sugar flavoring in this, which is gonna come through the meatloaf, which is gonna be amazing. So what I do is I take this, a half a package. That's all it takes is a half a package. A half a package of this to about two pounds of the ground beef. That's all I need. It's a half a package right there. I'm gonna save the rest. So I have in here salt, pepper. I have also in here my oats. I also have onion powder. Now I'm going to take what I sauteed, right? I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna pour it in here. And you might be saying to yourself, isn't he burning his fingers? Well, I've been doing this for so long. It is hot, but it's not that bad. Now, look inside that pan. You see the garlic and the onion, see how it's golden brown? That's the caramelization effect the heat has on those ingredients, which is gonna add nice flavor. Next thing I'm gonna do is what? I'm gonna now mix this all together. Mmm, the egg is breaking up. It's being mushed all together into my meatloaf. Right? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep squeezing and mixing together. Be careful that you don't get anything out of the bowl like I just did. You wanna incorporate it, right? And the heat of your hand and the heat from the peppers and the onions is gonna help melt the fat of the ground beef. Well, why is that important? I'm gonna tell you why that's important. Because as you're melting the fat in the ground beef, you're, you're squeezing it together more so that the, the beef is gonna be compacted better into your, muff, into your pan that you're going to use. Now, there's two pans you can use. Now, honestly, I can use a regular pan, a loaf pan, or you can actually make what we call meatloaf muffins. And you can put those in muffin pans Individual meat, like you'll roll it up into a ball, push it into the, uh, to the muffin pan, right? And it will cook and it will come out like the shape of a muffin. So we call those those meatloaf muffins. And those are really fun because kids like just take one, you know, it's simple to um, eat, put on the plate. And so what's happening is as I'm squeezing it, 
I'm squeezing the, uh, the ground beef and I'm melting the fat because of the warmth of my hand plus the warmth from the peppers and onions. I'm actually making a more finer texture. And that finer texture, when I slice my meatloaf open, it's gonna look smoother, it's gonna have a better presentation. And that's, that's kind of like what I like too, is I like making sure my food is presented really, really nice. So you're mixing that up, and that's pretty good. Got a nice little texture going on here, it's nice and smooth. So now I'm gonna discard my um, gloves, right? Now, take a look at that. And that's your meatloaf, right? That is ready to be put into a pan, which I'm going to take right here, okay? And what's gonna happen is now, I am going to be ready to go ahead and take my meatloaf and put it into my uh, 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 loaf pan. It can be something like this. Now, I already have some meatloaf prepared, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit, but I just wanna show you that you can use a pan like this or a little bit more of like a, a, a bread loaf pan, or like I said, muffin pins, muffin pans. And you can use that as well. But whatever you wanna use, it's up to you. But now this is ready to, to go into the oven. My oven is already preheated at 350 degrees. So that way, once I put this into my pan, I can go ahead and pop it right into my oven, and it will cook for about 40 minutes, okay? So what you do is you just simply take your meatloaf, you don't have to grease the pan. Why? Because grease, you already have enough fat in the meatloaf that this will not stick to your pan. You just wanna make sure you do it evenly though. Have it in the pan evenly. So you just keep pushing it, because there will be some air. There will be some air in this, this ground beef. But look at how fine the texture looks, right? Look how fine that texture looks. Now, I am going to cook some vegetables real quick because I want to, I'm gonna plate up the meatloaf I have ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and boil my snow peas real quick. All right, so here's your, here's your meatloaf. This is ready to go into the oven. Doesn't that look phenomenal? Look at that. Look at the, the uh, distribution of the peppers and onions throughout all of that. And that's what you want. So that way, when you cut this open later to serve, when people go ahead and eat your meatloaf, it will all be equally distributed. Now, pop it in my oven, 350. Okay. I still have some other meatloaf ready to go here. Ooh, that looks phenomenal. Now, I have some toppings I want to make. While my bean, my snow peas are cooking, I have some rice ready to go. I'm gonna put my whole plate together. Now, this is what's exciting. How you want to incorporate some more flavors into your meatloaf. So I have here some medium salsa and soy sauce. And I'm gonna make a nice sauce that I'm gonna put over my meatloaf, right? So I go ahead and put some uh, salsa. Then I take a little bit, a shot or two of soy. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mix this up. Gotta taste it. Oh, just taking salsa and soy sauce and mixing it together, it's got a nice briny flavor. Nice little salty, tomato acidic, all of that together with your meatloaf. Come on, come on, really? Are you kidding me right now? That's amazing. All right, so what we have now is my meatloaf is ready to be cut, right? I'm ready to cut my meatloaf. And I'm gonna plate everything up real quick. Let me get some gloves on here. I know what you're saying out there. Don't touch my food without gloves, right? That's right, food safety. You don't want somebody contaminating the food with their, their bare hands going on some food, right? All right, I'm turning off my green beans. Those are ready to go. I'm going to take my meatloaf that I already pre-cooked. I had some done already. I did a muffin pan or a loaf pan. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, my, my. Oh, my, my. Zero in on that. Zero in on that. Get in there.
Oh yeah. So I'm gonna take my knife. I'm gonna cut right down the center. Let's just look at it. Oh yeah, that looks gorgeous. Look at that, huh? That looks good, right? Now. Let me take time to plate this bad boy up. I got some nice rice here. Oh, this is so good. Mm-hmm. Mixing up my rice. Right? And put that down there, right? Then we have my green beans. We're going to go ahead and put those on here, right? Oh, look at this meal coming together. Look at this meal coming together. Look at this meal. Look at this meal just coming together for everybody. Absolutely phenomenal. Then we're going to take our sauce. Let's go over here. Huh? Look at this, huh? Come on! You can't tell me that don't look phenomenal. That dish looks absolutely amazing. That's a Bon Appetit dish right there. Mm -hmm. That's what we love to serve up right there. So, having made that, having made that, we want to continue to talk about, as you always hear me say, you know, it's great that you know how to cook. It's awesome that you can put a great meal together. And it's great that I might be able to hire you in my kitchen and give you a job. But my, my, what's more important isn't so much that you know how to cook, but what kind of person will you be? If you're in my kitchen, working with me and my team, what kind of person will you be? That's very, very important to me. So what I've also included in some of these lessons is not only to show you how to cook, but also how to better yourself. And there are skills that are called professional skills or soft skills that employers look for. And it's so important for you to learn them now. If you're, uh, if you're a young adult, if you're a teenager, or even if you're a young kid that's in uh, middle school or you know elementary school, these are skills you can learn right now, where you are and who you are right now. And it's so important. And these skills not only will help you at your job, they help also in life how you interact with other people, how you are as a person, or, or how you want people to see you, how you want them to interpret you, how do you want them to label you. So it's important the kind of person you present people with, the kind of person you're presenting everybody with every single day, that you understand the skills that will make it better for you, not only in your job, but in your school, but in life. And today I wanna to talk about integrity. Uh, a very important virtue or, or a very important skill that employers look for, integrity or honesty. Now, integrity can go two ways. Integrity may be doing the right thing when nobody's looking, meaning when nobody's in the room, do you do what's right? But also integrity can mean what you do when people are looking, meaning you're not influenced by other people to do what's wrong or right, you're, you're influenced by your own compass internally, that you always want to do the right thing. And just because other people are watching you, you're not intimidated with other people looking at you, wanting to ridicule you for you standing up for what's right. That also is integrity. And so employers would love to have their staff operate with a mindset of integrity. So it's very, very important that integrity regarding you and yourself 
is that you understand it's a sense of honesty above all else. It's understanding that in order for you to have good success, it is very important that you are building good relationships. And the only way you can build good relationships is through trust. That means you put, a, you put above other things the importance of displaying trust to have good relationships with other people. And so employers want to see that in their staff, that they can trust their staff. And it's very, very important that you understand successful businesses, okay, have employed people with integrity. Not only integrity with the company, but have integrity towards the customers the company that you work for serves. And so you have to have that in your mind. You have to be thinking about all of those things. So it's very, very important. So let's talk about certain steps you can take regarding integrity. Number one is show up ready to work. For instance, if you are 16 years old and you have a job, the way you can improve your integrity towards your employer is that when you show up to work, you're ready to work. You're meaning that your mindset is there, ready to do your job. You don't walk around and, and procrastinate. Also showing up on time is a form of integrity. Making sure you're there, right? Setting a positive example. Always want to be that person that sets an example for others to, to recognize. That is also integrity. That what you see other people doing that you know is not good, you choose not to do it and become the example of that. Be respectful during conflict is another great way of having integrity. Why? It doesn't mean that you have to agree with everybody, but what you should learn to do is always respect people who disagree with you. And learn to be respectful when you're disagreeing with somebody else. That is another form of integrity. So I want you to be thinking about that. And then lastly, practice accountability. I want you to understand how you can practice accountability by owning up to something when you know you're the one that's the culprit of doing something that was wrong. For instance, you make a mistake and it may have costed the company a few hundred dollars and you have to tell the boss it was you. You don't stay silent and have the boss assume it was somebody else that did it. No, integrity says, hey, I have to step up and tell the boss, tell the employer, I did it. I'm the one that did it. I'm gonna tell you right now, an employer will, will respect that. Even if you have to still get written up, and even though you might have to be disciplined, accept that and know the worth is much greater that the employer looks at you now as a respectful and a person of integrity. And that means they know that you are a person that holds accountability very high in your work ethic. And so they would respect that as you continue to be employed there. And they will look at you differently by saying, I can trust that person. I'm able to know that person will always be honest with me. So those are some simple steps. There's a lot more we can talk about when it comes to integrity, but I just wanted to share a little bit of that with you because it's so important that you learn to live with an attitude of integrity towards others. And always, always remember, good relationships are established on a core or a virtue called trust. So thank you. I appreciate it. I hope you all enjoyed what we made today together, that meatloaf, and then enjoyed this nice conversation about integrity. So until next time, my name is Steve Foreman, uh, 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 owner of Time and Honey, and we bring this to you. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and uh, if there's anything else that you would uh, like to share with us, always reach out to us. We have our website. It's www cook buffalo cooking class.com reach out to us or go to our facebook page and uh, look at us on facebook time and honey but give us a shout out let us know if there's other things that you're interested for us to do we'd be happy to do it but until then god bless you and you all have a great day